Hey there, it's Jeff, your friendly AI-generated avatar guide. Join me as we discuss the event that unfolded in Salem, Massachusetts, on July 19, 1692. Learn who the five innocent victims were and what happened to them on that fateful day in Salem. On July 12, 1692, Chief Justice William Stoughton signed a death warrant for Rebecca Nurse, Susanna Martin, Sarah Wilds, Sarah Good, and Elizabeth Howe. This warrant was given to Sheriff George Corwin, and it stated, Upon Tuesday next, being the 19th day of July, between the hours of 8 and 12 noon, you are to transport these five women from Salem jail to the place of execution, and there cause them to be hanged by the neck until they are dead. July 19, 1692, was the first mass execution of the accused witches in Salem, Massachusetts. Prior to July 19th, only one person had been executed for witchcraft. On June 10, 1692, Bridget Bishop was the first to be hanged at the place of execution, or what is called Proctor's Ledge today. Let's take a look at these five women and see who they were. Now there really isn't any way to truly know what they looked like. Some of the records give brief descriptions of them, so we created a few AI avatars to give you an idea of what they may have looked like. Elizabeth Howe was well liked in her community. However, in 1682, Elizabeth and her husband had a disagreement with their neighbors, the Purleys. Not long after this disagreement, the Purleys' ten-year-old daughter started having fits and accused Elizabeth of bewitching her. Elizabeth was never arrested. However, her reputation was severely tarnished by the accusation. Later it would be discovered that it was likely one of the Purley sons that put his sister up to making the accusations. The ten-year-old cleared Howe of doing any hurt to her in front of Reverend Samuel Phillips. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done and when the witch trials started in 1692, Elizabeth became a prime target for the witchcraft allegations. Susanna Martin had also faced accusations of witchcraft before the Salem witch trials. In 1669, William Sargent Jr. accused her of being a witch. Her husband, George Martin, sued Sargent for slander. The lower court upheld the accusations of witchcraft, and the charges were dismissed later by a higher court. Her husband, George, died in 1686, leaving Susanna an impoverished widow. With her bad reputation and no one to come to her defense, she became a prime target for the witchcraft allegations in 1692. Sarah Wilds was known for getting into trouble and was not liked in Topsfield. She appeared in court in both 1649 and 1663. In November of 1663, she married a local Topsfield judge named John Wilds, who was a widower with eight children. John's late wife's family was not happy with his new chosen wife. Her husband's former brother-in-law, John Gould, and his wife Mary had developed a hatred of Sarah that lasted years. To add to Sarah's troubles, her and John were in the middle of a land dispute between Topsfield and Salem Village. It is unclear if the land dispute had anything to do with why she was accused of witchcraft. Sarah Good was no stranger to bad luck. She was put into debt by her first husband after his death and lost all her possessions and land. She then married her second husband, William Good, who struggled to find work. She was homeless, poor, had a five-year-old daughter, and was pregnant. She resorted to wandering door to door, begging the town residents for whatever they could spare. Sarah and William had many disagreements with the local residents and had a reputation for being disruptive and spiteful. Due to her poor reputation and social status, she was a prime target for witchcraft accusations. Rebecca Nurse, a respected community member known for her devoted nature, was an unexpected target. She was an elderly woman of good character. Unfortunately, the land she was leasing to own from Reverend James Allen was part of a property dispute between the Endicott and Putnam families. Oddly enough, all of the afflicted that were accusing Rebecca were either members of the Putnam family or close friends. On June 29, 1692, she was acquitted by the trial jury. However, Chief Justice William Stoughton asked the jury to reconsider their verdict. They came back with a guilty verdict on the charges of witchcraft. The accused faced an uphill battle against a system that seemed stacked against them. The trials were marked by spectral evidence, whispers and rumors, which tragically held more weight than actual proof.
Despite their efforts to defend themselves and proclaim their innocence, they were all found guilty and hanged at Proctor's Ledge, their names forever attached to the dark legacy of the Salem Witch Trials. If you are interested in more information about the Salem Witch Trials, visit our website at 1692beforeandafter.com. If you plan to visit Salem, you won't want to miss our 1692 Salem Tour. We take a deep dive into the events surrounding the history of the Salem Witch Trials. Tickets are available on our website. The link to our website, as well as the trial videos for the five women discussed in this video, are listed below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Also, click subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Until next time, friends, remember history teaches us valuable lessons, and it's up to us to listen and learn from them.